Hello, my friend. Welcome to today's episode. We are going to be talking about breaking free from your phone addiction. Our phones are literally designed and made to keep us in that world and consuming that world. And that world isn't real. And that world does have some really positive things, some really positive ways that you can connect with people. But then there can be this teeter-totter into it creating a misconception of what other people's life is like versus yours. I know, especially with my kids getting older now, they can definitely verbalize, mom, put your phone down. (laughs) And that has hit my heart one too many times. So with the new year, I decided to create some intentions around my phone, which I'm going to share with you. But I also went back into the archives of my own podcast episode. And one of the most downloaded episodes has been breaking free from the addiction of my phone. So I'm going to replay that because I still stand by a lot of those standards and principles that I talk about, but I wanted to add in a few more that have been really beneficial and really helpful to me. And this stemmed from listening to a podcast episode. As you guys know, my main business endeavor right now, or my main business revenue right now is my podcast production business. And so I get to really listen to a lot of high level conversations and I catch these one-off sentences. And one of them was, a visualization that led to seeing their grandmother's phone on the wall with like the curly Q cord. And this curly Q cord is really, really long because at that time the phones were connected to the walls. And that really just made me sit and ponder like, yeah, remember when we had the circle dial phones, they stayed connected to the wall. I remember my mom like loving her cordless phone when she was cleaning and having conversations with my grandma and my aunts and her friends while she was doing stuff. And now we have our phones and they are like another appendage to our body. So one of the practices that I put into place was putting my phone on the charger, even if it is fully charged and kind of just mentally pretending it's connected to the wall. Because while I've seen this time and time again in entrepreneurship and people who have online businesses, there is this There's this teeter-totter that I see time and time again of like people who are always on their phone, they know they're consuming too much, but they really can't or aren't or don't know how to balance that healthy relationship with your phone. And then the other side of the coin is people taking breaks from social media. And I think that that is such a good thing to do. I am not going to say that we shouldn't take breaks from social media because there's only good things that can come from deleting the apps on your phone, paying attention to what is in your four walls instead of this alternate universe that lives within our phone and keeps us from living our own lives. It really does. So I'm not saying that people who take social media breaks are in the wrong because that's absolutely not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is I've always been the type of person that lives in the middle. And even with phone and being on my phone and being somebody who is on social media, I want to be in the gray. I don't want it to overconsume my life, but also I'm not going to have this dancing relationship with social media where when I'm on it, I'm consuming too much. And when I have had enough, I have to completely get off of it and delete the apps to create equilibrium again. So I think keeping my phone in one spot, having it be a cord attached to the wall makes it so I am can check it if I need to or look up something if I need to remember it, right? 
But it also, I'm not going to stand in that one space and place for hours and hours and hours. And it's not like plugged into the wall next to the couch. So then I sit and I'm on it while it's there. It's on one of my kitchen countertops. So when I want to look at it, I go and I look at it and I check the things and I leave it there. It doesn't come with me to the bathroom. It doesn't come with me when I'm in the pantry or then going upstairs to do laundry, it stays connected to the wall. And that's been a new boundary and principle that has been really helpful for me in what you'll hear later on in the episode where I've coined a no phone zone. Because sometimes I have to look something up. Sometimes I remember something that I want to add to the reminder on my phone to remind me at a later date or my digital calendar. There are times where it has popped up where I'm like, oh, I need to grab my phone for that. And if I have it upstairs in my bedroom, like, yes, it makes it inconvenient for me to go from downstairs to upstairs and around and then come back down. So I just really had to find a gray area in that, okay, instead of being like, oh, absolutely new, no phones during this time, how can I be in that gray area where it's a part of reality, it's a part of life, but it's not over consuming. Because I've seen this so much where ladies get on social media and they're on it so much over consuming or over comparing themselves. And then they're like, oh, forget it. I need to get off of this. It's running my life. And they get off of it and they find so much peace and they love it. And every time somebody gets off of social media, they're like, it was so awesome. But then they go back to social media or back to their phone addiction without boundaries in place, without habits in place, without structures and standards in place. And then they get into the cycle of overconsumption and over comparing again. Another thing that I have found really helpful with the relationship to my phone, and I still I might talk about this in the latter the latter part of this episode, but just in case I don't cover this, I really love using the features on the iPhone of do not disturb mode. So I set one up for workout time, work time, and nighttime. So the nighttime one turns on at a specific time. And if my husband or my mom or my dad calls, it, there's stipulations to it, right? So it's like a do not disturb, but you can put it into settings of if this person is trying to contact me, give me a notification. And so when it comes to the work hours one, my workout time one, you know, it's the kids at school, it's my husband, it's my mom, whoever is just like, well, whoever's that reason for like, okay, well, I don't want to turn my phone off completely just in case so-and-so needs to get a hold of me. You can set up those intentional times in your phone for certain um, notification silences or do not disturbs, where with do not disturbs, I have it set so the certain people who are in the care of like my family members or my kids or whatever it is, their calls, their messages will still come through. It'll just really silence everything else out. And while, yeah, it was hard for me to even, this is aging myself, I really had to think about what I was, I really had to think about what pockets of time I want to safeguard. And for me, it was my workout time because I believe there is such a huge connection to your mind and your body. If you are working out and you are multitasking and your brain space is just not fully present within your body and what type of movement you're doing and the purpose behind that movement that you're doing, I believe, and I've read in The Joy of Movement, there is that disconnect, you know, and I want to just be like, if I'm working out, that is my me time. That is where I want to shut the rest of the world out. But if my kids at school needs to get hold of me, which now I'm working out early in the morning, so nobody needs me that early in the morning. But in the past, you know, I used to do it at different times throughout the day and notifications would come through for various things with work or personal life. And I I created that workout one to turn those notifications off. Um, 
if messages came through in the evening past a certain time, I'm like, I am not going to have my mental space be bombarded with it. It's nothing is of high essence and high priority if it's not coming from my husband my or my parents. For whatever reason, if those guys need to get a hold of me, it'll come through and everything else can wait till the morning. But if there's certain people in your life that you're like, oh, if they have an emergency, you know, if like a friend is going to be having a baby soon and you're one of the people they could call, you just add their name to the person to ring through, even if that type of setting is on and then work. I am a single minded person, like single minded, a single task person where I want to just focus on one thing at a time. And if I'm in the middle of doing something work-wise and if it my attention gets drawn to a separate conversation and then my brain has a hard time getting back to task when it's like going from here to here to here to here to here. And so I put safeguards on my phone of like when I'm sitting down and I'm going to get work done, I put that setting on my phone on And I take care of that task at hand and I'm not being distracted by somebody asking me a question about this. Those types of questions can wait till I'm done doing the focus thing that I'm doing. So I am using those focus times. I believe that's what it's called on iPhones is the focus times. And then also, while I know TikTok, especially Reels, can be very, very, very addicting, I have in my mind that I, if I'm going to do a mindless scroll and just like consume, I want to be moving or standing. I, majority of the time, now this is not every time, remember, with everything, I try to always live in like the gray area. So yeah, you can catch me scrolling my phone uh, on the couch sometimes. But majority of the time, if I'm like, oh, I just want to like consume on social, There's two things that I put to safeguard it. One is, am I going to go on my walking treadmill or am I going to stand up and look at my phone and like hold it up above my eye level so I'm not getting tech neck any more than I already do because especially now that I'm podcast producing, I'm sitting in front of my computer a lot more and am I going to be able to lift my arm up and look up at my phone so my neck is no longer straining down. That has cut my scrolling time down a lot because my arm gets tired. (laughs) My arm gets tired. Or once I'm done walking, I stop the scroll. Another thing is, is I scroll with a purpose. And I was telling one of my girlfriends about this because I think I'm one of the few people that has a healthy relationship with TikTok. I really do. I view TikTok as a search engine. It's my new search engine. Usually before I go on to Pinterest, before I go on to Google, I usually head to TikTok. Now, there are definitely times where I'm like, I'm deleting TikTok off my phone because I just don't want to. And I delete it off my phone for a few days and then I add it back in. But for example, I have wanted to get back into running. And when I say running, I mean jogging because I... I'm going to be straight up with you guys, and I think I've talked about this before. I spent a lot of last summer with a five-year-old that was like into playing tag. Chase me, mom. Let's play tag. Let's play tag. And every time I ran, even if it was a jog, I felt so heavy. My hips, my legs, my knees, it just did not feel good. And so I have been adding a lot more cardio into my routine. And this is side note, but because I have a different reason and purpose why behind doing cardio, it has felt so different because in the past, and I've done like 5k challenges over the summer, you guys, if you've followed me for a long time, you know, that's kind of one of my summer challenges is improving my 5k time. But when I'm running, I'm, I've been thinking about losing weight. Like when I was running, I would be thinking about, oh, this would feel so much better if I just dropped this weight. But now when I visualize like, 
I either if I'm on my bike or if I am doing a fast paced walk or kind of like an interval jog on my walking treadmill, it's actually getting pretty nice out. I've got a couple resources and places where I'm going to start going if the weather does turn again and get cold so I can continue on my running and my cardio. But when I am doing my cardio, even on my bike, I'm imagining chasing my kids and then them laughing and me being in shape in that way to keep up with them because I'm really strong when it comes to weight training. Give me a barbell, give me heavy weights. I can do that. I have lacked so much in cardio because I've heard and been told like, oh, I hate cardio. I'm not a cardio person. Weights are more effective. Da, 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 da. And while I don't even care about the science at this point, by like, I want to feel physically fit overall. I want to have good flexibility and mobility. I want to have good cardiovascular. I've got the strength down. I really, really, really do. I think my body type naturally is strong with those big muscle groups. And I've been adding in more cardio. I've been keeping up with one day a week of lower body weight training, one day a week of upper body weight training, and the rest is core, cardio, walking, on my bike, because I want to run with my kids. I want to keep up. And sore, stiff muscles, I've even paid attention to different ways how the energy is. But anyways, we are supposed to be talking about being on your phone, but feeling that tie and that connection to your phone always, all the time, it's becoming like an adult pacifier, isn't it? Like, when was the last time you got in the car and you drove somewhere without your phone next to you? Now, well, once again, want to live in the gray area because when we're driving somewhere and if something happens while we're driving, it's really nice and really awesome that we can just use our phone that's in our car to call up for whatever kind of help that we need and we don't have to try to flag somebody down on the side of the road, which could be very dangerous, right? Like I see both sides of this and this is why I hope that this episode isn't about like going from one direction to the other and I've got more tips coming for you. This is a repost of an old episode, but still full of so many golden nuggets. It's one of my top downloaded episodes, which is why I wanted to reshare it, but really I've given you a lot already and I hope you just lean into setting boundaries in place that work for you around your phone, why you are on your phone, what you do while you're on your phone, and remember that living life off screen is so much better than what this meta this meta world that's completely made up, that's completely edited, that's completely curated, that it's not real. It's not real. Your life is. The people that are around you, your four walls, the air that is outside of your door, the neighborhood that you live in, the community support that you are connected with. Social media is one part of life. It's not all of life and the people that I've seen make it their entire life and their entire living, things get murky a lot of the times and they crumble. But I think it's really more about leaning into balance and boundaries, not swaying from one extreme to the other of being off my phone, I'm taking a break. And then the other of like over consuming and letting it completely control you. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode and I'll talk to you guys later. We're rolling right into the five practices and then I'm going to talk to you guys really about why I did this for myself and the thoughts and the chatter type of stuff at the end of this episode. So let's talk about an information fast and this is going to be taking a look at any way that you 
have information coming in. Yes, obviously social media is one, but it may not be the only one. Maybe for you it is articles or blogs or Pinterest or podcasts. I was so guilty of this and I had done social media like detoxes in the past, but I still would often allow my regular podcasting or audiobook or reading books and, and everything like that. And I really stripped it all away. The the community that I'm a member of, the She Works His Way community, had this as their masterclass in June. And so that is part of the reason why I I did this. And it was recommended to do no less than five days. And I am on the fifth day right now. And I'm going to kind of share with you all at the end my thoughts and experiences, but I want to get into the best practices right away. So here are your five practices to break free of phone addiction. The first one I have for you is establishing a boundary or what I like to call a no phone zone. So this is a block of time where you are saying like, I am not going to have my phone around me. I'm not going to be opening up the certain apps that suck me in, whatever they are for you. I'm not going to be listening to my podcast. This is my no phone zone. And if you really are struggling with um, the addiction of the of your phone, if you're like, I am so guilty of this, I would recommend you start with a fast first. So starting with a fast first, that's the second tip. But the first tip is setting a no phone zone and keeping that boundary. Maybe you need to put your phone in a drawer or put it in another room, but setting a certain time of day where you are not having your phone by you. And I would encourage you to start implementing this, of course, with family time. Of course, with family time. You know, 4 to 8 p.m. was kind of my standard of no phone zone. And that works really well because that is the time that I'm picking my kids up from daycare and then we do dinner time and then my, you know, like my husband is coming when we're doing family time together and then it's like bed, bath, books, no phone zone during that time was a small habit that created a domino effect in all other areas of my life. I felt more connected to my kids. I felt like we had more de-stress and and decompress time at the end of the day. So with this habit of a no phone zone, this was really great for me and my family. Another time that would be really great for you is saying like if you are a stay-at-home mom and it's really that like wake and rush to get the kids out of the door, having a no phone zone during the time that you and your family wake up to a certain time mid-morning. And that's really setting your day apart because you are not consuming or getting in outside information at the start of your day because that just adds in more chaos and clutter to your mind. Back to the tip on information fast. So if you really are like, I am so addicted to my phone. I It's so habitual. I don't even think about it. It just happens. I literally see my screen report at the end of the week or the beginning of the week, and I am appalled with how much I am spending time on my phone. I would really encourage you to do an information fast for five plus days, at least five plus days. Delete the apps and then also eliminate all of those information sources that you get information from. For me, it was podcasts and books and all of those things because as you are taking in information, you really are clouding your own thoughts and processes and you're also covering up God's voice. You're covering up the sweetness and the moments and the peace that is being like literally clouded by the information, the noise that you are getting because of this little device that we can carry around with us all the time. Third tip is use the new features on your phone. I don't know if this is true for other phones, but Apple's new update has it so you can set your phone on different modes. Take the time to set those different modes. If you, the sleep mode is a good one to set up first. If you want to not be on your phone, 
past 8 a.m., then set your phone to sleep mode. And there are very great and intricate settings. So if a particular person calls you, it will still let that call come through. Or if somebody calls twice in a row, it will let that call come through the second time. You can use it obviously for the sleep mode. You can use it for no phone zone. And you can use it for work mode. And the cool thing about this is, is if you have an iPhone, I know this works for iPhone, you'll have to check what your phone updates are. But with iPhone, if your phone is on work mode or silence mode and somebody texts you, it will send them a text of this person it has silenced notifications. And so you can let those important people know that need to get a hold of you, how they can get a hold of you if it is in that silent mode, call twice. And for me, that's mostly my mom, my dad, and my husband, and our daycare. Those are the ones that will um, still come through during my designated phone times. And this is something that I put as a priority to set up while I was on my information fast. I wanted to go into the settings and create one for when I'm wanting to get focused work done, when I'm wanting to have no phone zone as a family. And then my sleep one was already kind of set up for me because that's what I use for my regular and consistent um, clock. And it also, when I, if I happen to be on my phone at 8.05 and my sleep reminder comes on, it is just a trigger to be like, okay, I am done with this thing because if I do not stop looking at my phone, stop going on social and scroll- scrolling, I'm not going to fall asleep as well. And I cherish my sleep time. The fourth thing, are we on number four? Yeah. No, we are on number, you guys, I've been saying five best practices, but you're totally going to get a six, (laughs) six practices to break free from phone addiction is knowing that when notifications do come through, you have to create this dialogue in your brain of that's not important right now, notifications. So for example, if somebody is asking me a question or if a notification comes through that isn't urgent, I let that notification be. It is a-okay to let that notification be and be like, that is not, that's not important right now. That is not important right now. Now, obviously, if you are in a space and place where you aren't um, where you're just like consuming social media, of course, go in and respond to those to those notifications, but when it comes to times with your kids, like if you're sitting at the dinner table and a text message from somebody tends to come through, it is okay to respond to them at 7.45 when your kids are in bed. Like it is a okay. We do not need to give access, instant access to us at every moment, whether it be text messages or social media DMs. You can trigger your brain and start telling your brain to like, that's that's not urgent right now. And that is okay. When it comes to emails, messages, you, you do not need to respond to things that they are like fires that you need to be put out right now. And you guys, I know I am saying this as a person who runs business and has social media presence online. My business isn't fully run online, but I, well, it is fully run online, but it's not fully dependent on just social media apps, right? And so I know for some, it's like, oh my gosh, if I were to take five days off of social media, what would happen? That's probably a big sign that you need to take the information fast and you need to pause from it, right? If you are gripping so hard to, if you think it's a make or break type of thing for you and your business, five days, uh, guys, a lot of your followers are not even going to know that you were gone for five days. I'm going to put that as my first poll when I open up my social media apps again. And I would guess there was not a lot of people who noticed or who cared that I took a five day break. Okay. The next tip is, so this one is tip number five, is keep your phone off your body as much as 
possible. We use our phones like an adult pacifier and it is quite ridiculous. If we saw an eight-year-old carrying around a pacifier, a pacifier is something that gets them distracted, that, you know, kind of like keeps them consumed in self or keeps them in this, like it's the security blanket. We strip that pacifier away from a child way younger before it comes an addiction. But we keep our phones on our body more than a child carries their favorite blankie or their favorite Lightning McQueen car. If you're like my, if you we're referring to my three year old, like if we have our phones on our bodies all the time, it is going to be more accessible to open those apps and to pass the time. You know, even applying this in small increments can make a big shift in your life. My friend Lexi was telling me, you know, when you don't have the addiction of social media, especially in moments like pumping gas, you find more ways to be productive in other ways that bring you more peace. For example, now when I am pumping gas, and this is a tip that I got from my friend Lexi, now when I'm pumping gas, I'm often looking for the garbage in my car and putting it into the garbage at the gas pump. And what does that do? It helps me create a peaceful place in my car, a little bit more of a tidy car in a time where I would have just been filling it with social media scrolling. And isn't that silly that I had to give myself an adult pacifier situation in something as simple as it takes a couple minutes to fill up my tank and now I use it to be a little bit more productive because that little bit of productivity gives me more peace when my car isn't cluttered with all of the papers from daycare and wrappers or you know the blankets or toys that are in my car I can tidy it up a little bit and it brings me more peace I'm trading that information input with something that will bring me more peace and it's not about being a productive all the time and not ever having moments of stillness but it's not productive to just scroll on social media when I'm at the gas pump like that's kind of ridiculous and what we do with our phones while driving all of us I believe are guilty of this and it is so dangerous and it's kind of like we'd all shake our heads at ourselves and each other because it is just it's just there and when it is all always on us. So using the time and space to like, even if you want your phone near you to, if you hear a phone call, putting it in another room is a great practice or keeping it in a singular spot. So if you are responding to something, you are standing in that singular spot for responses and then walk away from it and then walk away from it. And the last tip is especially for those of you who are content creators or you like posting and sharing stuff online, this is what I want you to know. Capture the moment and be present then later, Graham. And what I mean by that is post it later. I couldn't believe when I was coaching my um, health and fitness team, really when stories started becoming a thing and they were talking about how it was becoming a big distraction mid-workouts because everybody is posting workout clips from their workouts of them working out. And they were like, you know, to set it up and open Instagram and use the self timer and then post it up. That's taking a lot of time out of my workouts and I was just baffled. I was like, no, 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 my friends. When in that situation, I am not even unlocking my phone. I'm swiping my phone to the camera, taking maybe a minute clip of a workout move and then I turn my phone off and then I post it later. I post it when I'm done. I'm posting it when I am checking in with my group after the workout is completed. And same with when you are capturing moments this summer, when you're out on the boat, when you are at the lake, when you are doing the activities and visiting the friends and family, you don't have to take the picture and post it immediately. Be the master at posting a latergram. Nobody knows, and it is no different if you post it in the moment or one to two hours later. You're still sharing the moment. You're sharing 
or the content or whatever information it was at the time, but it does keep you focused and keep you fret present when you are posting a latergram. And I even follow some accounts that delete social for the entire weekend. And then Monday morning, they're sharing kind of a recap of the beauty of their weekend. And I still think it is just as wonderful to can as the consumer of their content like I don't care I don't care that they are posting a picture from an event they went to on Saturday when I'm enjoying it Monday morning it's still cool to experience with them right and so those are my five best practices to break free from phone addiction These are going to be in different order. Once again, I just said five, but I gave you a bonus of six. One and two kind of went together. Let's just say that the information fast of five days or more or no phone zones, that is tip number one. Tip number two, use the new features that help like not have notifications and distractions coming in. Tip number three is knowing that notifications are not important right now. Four, keep it off your body as much as possible. Get rid of thinking, get rid of it being your adult pacifier. And then the fifth one is capture and then post it later. And why am I talking about social media? And I've had these type of episodes before in the past on this topic when I am a health and fitness and wellness hormone cycle syncing um, podcast is because your phone does affect your health. It affects your attention, your energy, added stress. And when your brain is only meant to consume and process so much, we are exhausting ourselves and stressing ourselves out and stress and time and energy and focus when it is limited like that. It affects your health big time. It affects your sleep, which affects your hormones, right? And so breaking free from phone addiction can impact your health and wellness in really, really big ways. And one of which that is important that I don't think a lot of people talk about is the posture of depression. Think of how you are sitting when you are scrolling on social media. Think of how you, like what your body language is like when you are scrolling on social media or when you're just looking at your phone in general. Your head is down. Your body and shoulders are kind of like slunched in. And if I were to told you to get into a a body language of anxiety, depression, and sadness, it looks very much like the you holding your phone. And there was actually a photographer that captured a picture of a t- like a group of people that were on their phones, and the photographer eliminated the phones from the the picture image. So it was really just everybody with that type of body language hunched over looking at their phones, but you couldn't see their phones because it was photoshopped out and everybody just looked so sad and depressed. Everybody did. And so it makes me wonder what this is going to do for our physical body in the longevity when we are constantly like looking down and hunched over. So I would even encourage you when you are scrolling, Lift your phone a little bit higher. Lift your phone a little bit higher. Get your chin up. Put your shoulders back and pay attention to posture. This The other kind of chit-chat I want to... So now I'm kind of into the chit-chat. I'm past the points and practices to break free from addiction is it really does have an impact when you are on your brain, when you're only looking at close up things. Andrew Huberman of is it what's his podcast but Andrew Huberman was being interviewed and he had talked about how we are looking at things so close up and it actually is very important for our energy and our brain to be looking off in the distance and so when you are getting outside or when you are taking a break from work if you work on a computer it's very important for you to take time to look out onto the horizon and have focal points of eye time that is at a distance is very important for your eyes and your brains to be doing that. I want you to take note of like, for me, this was really something that I was using for numbing. I was numbing the moments of discomfort or not wanting to be alone with my thoughts, trying to seek entertainment and validation. And it was 
kind of in the claims of I was looking for inspiration or looking for people to have on my podcast. Like I was really relating a lot of it to work efforts. And after these five days of being off of it, I was like, wow, that was a joke, Joelle. Like you were not really using it as a tool. You were over consuming and it was definitely an addiction. And that's what it is designed to be. It is seriously designed to capture us and to suck us in and to keep us constantly consuming. It is meant to hit the part of our brain where it's like dopamine, 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 addiction. And the big one for me was it blocked out me hearing God's voice. Recently in my life, I have had a lot of questions for God. I've had a lot of questions and I felt like I haven't been getting answers. But when I was on the She Works His Way call, one of the questions they had, like, if you need to do an information fast, are you having a hard time hearing God's voice? And when I journaled on that, like, am I having a hard time feeling or hearing God's voice? It was like, why? And she said on there, God doesn't hide from us. God doesn't hide his voice from us. He is not a meek and timid God. He is not a secret keeping God. And it's us who hides from him like Adam and Eve did in the garden. It's us who clouds our, like clouds our um, connection to him by using things like social media and constantly listening to podcasts. And this is where I had the aha with my earbuds. You guys, prior to, I don't think my phone can track this and I don't think my earbuds track this, but not only was I spending a lot of time scrolling on social media, but the amount of podcasts I was consuming, I'm a podcast person, consuming in a singular day, information overload. There was no way I had been retaining all of these um, insightful moments and information from amazing people. Like I am subscribed and following really great podcasters, but there was no way I was taking in actually what they were saying and retaining it because it was so much. I always had my earbuds in. So it was literally, I had the aha moment of, I always have my earbuds in. So I legit always have earplugs. No wonder why I am not hearing God's voice. No wonder why I'm hearing, not hearing God's voice when in the little midst moments, I have my earbuds in because I'm, I was just, I don't even know why you guys. And probably stems a lot from my personal development days of, you know, always be doing something productive when you're doing something passive. So having a podcast on when you're folding the laundry and doing the dishes and all these things. While that is good advice, the overconsumption of like what I was doing was not. It was not. It was literally blocking me hearing God's voice, God's direction, and it was keeping me constantly cluttered instead of peace because not that I've heard these big aha conversation moments with God in the last five days but what I have found is more peace and realistically I was thinking about this when I was driving home from dropping the kids off at daycare these last five days I know with the last two years it's like the world has been crazy there is so much bad news it's like we get access to information that is global and while we all can't live in our bubbles all of the time I have been in my own little personal bubble the last five days and I've really had the awareness of things are actually really good. Things are really peaceful. Everything is okay. We do have enough. We are prepared. And I didn't, I came out of this like fear mongering anxiety headspace. You know, I was really noticing we're surrounded by really good people when media and everything really shows us the bad and the scary stuff. And while it is not healthy to always be living in this bubble of my own like little Midwest bubble where there isn't um, different experiences and I'm not learning from others, sometimes just coming back to your own peaceful bubble (laughs) and being like, we are we are making enough income we are in a good space and really kind of coming back to contentment is a good thing to kind of self check on every now and again because i was really starting to fear 
people and being around others and when we've we've actually been very social over the last five days and I'm like we are surrounded with really cool really great and really wonderful people in our local community and um, I'm going to kind of go into talking about my five days so I closed out my apps on a Friday evening and that Friday evening we were out and about with with people and it was great and I tend to not be on my phone when I am around people like when I have a friend come over and even somebody who is also on social media building a business or whatever we are not, I'm not grabbing my phone. I am being present in the moment, but because I work from home and I like being home and my kids are home with me and stuff, I just really found myself letting go of those boundaries and those standards. Because even for me, who was saying I have a no phone zone of four and eight, there were times where I was still like opening the apps and I wasn't being disciplined with that no phone zone even when I had some of those systems set in place. So I think the five day fast really got me in check with how often I grabbed my phone and would just open in mindless moments. And at first, so like Saturday and Sunday, like I said, we had a very social weekend. So it was very relaxed and very present. And I kind of didn't even realize the difference between having it on my phone and not having it on my phone. But then Monday rolled around and Monday was a day where I brought the kids to daycare and I came home and got prepared for the Feminine Edge Collective um, mat class. Like I really got into some work. And then once I was done with my work to do's, I started noticing my brain was craving it. I was even thinking of and conversing with myself of, oh, I could just, I could just download it now. I did, you know, I deleted it over the weekend. That was fine. That was fine. And by Monday, it was like spinning. My brain was spinning because it is designed to be addictive and it got kind of hard on Monday and Tuesday to not reopen the apps and check things and even you know I did listen to podcasts a little bit but I was very selective on listening to just one just one and taking it in and not using my earbuds like a pacifier you know like we can have our phones as like a baby pacifier but I was really conscientious of not even reading books. I wasn't reading my fiction books. I was just staying focused with journaling and the Bible. That that was it. And um, I've, I noticed the addiction to it. And I've, I'm still on day five. I, I don't plan on adding them back today. We will see what tomorrow brings. And the next day actually is when Lauren and her kids are coming over. So I don't even think I'll have it on maybe until Thursday night, maybe Friday. I do not know, but this has been just so sweet and I am so grateful for the Feminine Edge Collective because we still have had really great conversation. We had a great conversation about phone addiction and scream time and that they were the inspiration of this podcast of why I did it and um, I want to just be transparent of during the five days of information fast like not being on social I did drop the ball on some things like there was an interview that I was going to be doing and and we'll reschedule because I really want you guys to hear it. And I dropped the ball because the only place that I was keeping track of when the interview was happening and the communication with the person I'll be interviewing was on social media and I didn't write it down. I didn't write it down and we had planned this in May and I did not even think to write it down because I didn't have this information fast planned. It was kind of spontaneous, but it was very much needed. It was something I knew that I was wanting to do, but with the launch of the Feminine Edge Collective, um, May wasn't the right time for it. And then when June came around and I'm like, we're, we're kicked off in the membership. My focus is in the membership. I can delete the apps and there's there's conversation and communication going on in our commu- our feminine edge collective but it's not overload. Like you can go in there and you see 
you know, the conversation and then you get out and it's not like a rabbit hole. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to get in on that, like I said, this is a secret. This is an exclusive to you, the listener. I'm not totally social about this, but I am opening it up for you guys to get in so you can be with us for the um, Savor Your Season Bible study. And this is going to be really, really, really cool. I, I actually was creating it and wanted to record it in an inst- in that instant, but I'm holding it down. I'm holding it in and I'm, I'm bringing in more to it as I'm still sitting and savoring my own season and what that looks like for me right now. So that is about breaking phone addiction. Maybe you are inspired to do an information fast. I would just encourage you like delete the apps. And even if it's for four hours or four days, see how you feel. But if you see that screen time each and every week, that's like, whoa, I spent how much time looking at this thing and you're kind of embarrassed by it. I would definitely start with the information fast. And that means of all types of information, not just social, but podcasts and audio books. And for me, the information that I was taking in was through my faith. Like I definitely just sat and looked and stared and studied Ecclesiastes. And it's been so great. It's also given me more space to connect with friendships. You know, all those times where you're like, oh, I don't have the time or capacity to respond to friends or text messages that come in. Once you eliminate social media, you can go into those messages and connect with the people who really matter to you. And yeah, I've totally missed some people of like, what are they up to? Because that's where people post what they are up to. But for five days, you guys, five days, I'm not asking you to delete it forever. I'm not asking you to walk off the face of the earth. I had that same dialogue in my head, but what if I miss out on this? What if I don't respond to that? What if somebody has a question about this program? What if somebody wants to join my team? What if somebody wants to whatever it was? And I was like, Joelle, for five days, it can all be on pause and it will all be fine. And it has been fine. It has. 100% has been fine. I've still kept up with some routines and rhythms of working out, but I've just found more peace and more stillness. And even though there was in the beginning, like I said, on that third day on Monday, I was afraid to be alone with my thoughts. And that's why I was using social media to numb out what I was thinking. But I listened to a podcast. It was a Skinny Confidential podcast with Ed Milet, and he just had so much wisdom. I really think I'm going to listen to that episode again because he had talked about so many things that can enhance our lives with just simple shifts. And he didn't call it a no phone zone, but he did bring up when his kids come home from school or come home from an activity or when he walks in the door from work, that 30 minutes is there's there's no phone. Like it is look in the eyes. How is your day? Give the attention to the moment right then. Because oftentimes when you come in and you do pour into and you clear your mind for that time, you come back, reset and recharge so you can get back into whatever it is you need to be into. I'm going to end it on that for today because I know this has been a lot. We're dropping to one episode a week this summer. We are so close to 100,000 downloads and I thank you so much. We will have a celebration of that when it happens and that was something I needed to also lay down to the Lord of nearing 100,000 downloads means I should be doing more podcast episodes so we get there faster. But when I was sitting thinking about it, I was like, you know, that just 
that I'm not going to idolize the number of downloads. I really want to stay centered in the impact that I am giving to the people that I am serving. And this podcast is free to you and it costs me money to run it. I pay for the podcasting platform there. This is not a free thing for me, but I am 100% grateful to the ladies of the Feminine Edge Collective. That is seriously what right now is helping me sustain this podcast and also I want to give and pour into them and thanking them for that so they are getting more time and energy and effort I told them think of our feminine edge collective app as their own little mini podcast app where they can actually talk to me where it's like if they hear the extra like episodes or the videos that I put out and they have a question or when they listen to each podcast episode come into the app and like let's have a discussion about it and we did just that we did just that with this um five-day information fast that I was sharing with them and it's a place where we can actually communicate with each other and it is so appreciated to for you I'm a I'm very appreciative of you becoming a member because it keeps me able to to doing what I do here on the podcast. And I appreciate that because I love podcasting so much. It is my dream and my goal for podcasting to be my income, be a, a big income source for me. It is a, it's a goal of mine. And right now, this isn't what pays the bills. It, it's not. And that's okay but I do just want to be transparent on um, the gratitude that I have for those of you ladies in the community because it does keep me able to do this. And I don't think many entrepreneurs share that type of transparency when we start something new or even as we hit 100,000 downloads. Like I get turned down by podcast sponsors because it's not big enough. And so it is something that I am I'm taking income from and pouring into because I do love it and I do believe in this. I believe we are growing beyond um, feminine fitness. And once we rebrand, it is going to be a big lifestyle type of podcast and I really do appreciate your support and whether it's becoming a feminine edge collective member or sharing this on your social media or even better leaving a rating and a review because that helps the podcast algorithm out a lot. I just want to extend my gratitude of thanks for you, but because without it, this podcast would still just continually be an expensive hobby when I I want this to grow and be something really big for you and for me and my family and for like for something that really um, impacts the hearts of so many women. So I thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I'm a, I'm repeating myself at this point, but I want I want you to know, like you listening, especially in a longer episode like this, you are appreciated and I thank you so much. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you loved what you heard or you want to share your favorite episode topics, please leave a rating and review. This helps the podcast growth and gives people an idea of what the podcast is all about. Something new and exciting that I wanted to share with you before we go is that we now have a Patreon page. This has replaced the Feminine Edge Collective community in a cohesive place that is easier for me to manage and cheaper for you. If you are interested in our monthly classes, exclusive day in the life vlogs, Bible studies, community Q&A, and more, go to patreon.com forward slash living in sync and join for just $5 a month. Check out the show notes for any links or details of things referenced in today's episode, and I look forward to chatting with you in the next one.